My Thai-inspired lettuce wraps are so easy to make and have incredible depth of flavor. I'm Justin from Cooking with Coit. I specialize in clean comfort cooking. And if you love this recipe, make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons. Let's get started. Let's first go over all the ingredients you need to make this recipe. Ground chicken, carrot, ginger, garlic, lettuce cups, onion, cabbage, green onion, soy sauce, sweet chili sauce, and salt and pepper. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is to dice up a half a cup of onion. Now, one other thing I wanted to tell you guys is like, I just love one pan meals. And this is a fantastic one pan meal. They're easy to make and they really just don't require a lot of cleanup, which is one of my most favorite things about any recipe. Will you guys let me know in the comments below if you love one pan meals as much as I do? I'd love to know. Next thing we're gonna do is to mince up one tablespoon of ginger. Ginger is such an important and incredible flavor in this recipe, so definitely don't skip it. If you like ginger, you're gonna love this recipe. Next, we're gonna mince up three cloves of garlic. Next, we're moving on to chopping three green onions. For reference, we're going to be chopping all of the white part and most of the green part too. Next thing we're gonna do is to julienne our carrots. And if you don't know what julienne means, all it means is that we're gonna cut them into really thin, almost like matchstick kind of shape, but even thinner than a matchstick. And I have a good technique for showing you how to do that. So the first thing you need to do is to cut off the end. You just wanna get rid of, uh, you know, the stem part. Next, you want to cut as small of a piece down the side as you possibly can. And what this is gonna do is, it's going to give us a nice flat surface to work with. So while we're cutting our carrot, it's not rolling uh, back and forth, which is kind of dangerous. Next thing I like to do is to cut it again in half, basically. Um, and the reason why I say basically is because you have to envision what is the longest julienne piece of carrot that you're gonna use. This is a pretty nice length. So that's the length of carrot that I'm gonna use. So next you want to cut the carrot into sheets. And so what I mean by that is just start on one side and cut nice thin sheets all the way down. As you get to the other side of the carrot, it's gonna be a little difficult to hold it steady. So just go really slow. There's no need to rush. I don't want anyone cutting their fingers. And then when you get to the very end part, you can just set it aside, it's all good. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna take your sheets and you can stack them a few at a time. And then from here, you wanna cut really thin julienne pieces of carrot, just like this. And what you should be left with is a very thin julienne piece of carrot, just like this. All right guys, now we're at the fun part, that's the cooking. So take a little bit of olive oil, drop it into the pan. You can just do about a tablespoon or so. Next, we wanna drop in our onions. And we're gonna saute these onions until they've turned slightly translucent, which is the thing I say literally every time. So I guess I could just say cook onions and then you guys would probably know what I mean. Like, does anybody not cook onions until slightly translucent? I guess if you're caramelizing them, you're going past translucent, but whatever. Guys, I completely forgot to tell you, add a little bit of salt and pepper. It's about a half a teaspoon of salt and about a quarter teaspoon of pepper onto the onions. And this is gonna help uh, bring out the full flavor of the onions as they're sauteing. Next, we're gonna add in the garlic and ginger and wait until you guys smell how incredible this is gonna smell when it all starts sauteing together. Now, this is a really good time to make sure that your heat is not set too high on your pan because you definitely don't want to burn your garlic. We're just gonna let this all saute together until it becomes fragrant. All right guys, so next we're going to add in our cabbage. So this is already pre-sliced cabbage. Again, I've been like super lazy cooking lately and I bought a cabbage mix from the store. You can totally do that if you want or you can buy uh, individual raw cabbage and just slice it yourself. We're gonna add a half a cup of cabbage and we're also gonna add in our julienne carrots and this is a half a cup. And finally, we're gonna add our chopped green onions from our three green onions and wait till you guys start smelling it now. What I love about this recipe is that, you know, you start with the onions, carrots, and ginger, and then you just start layering all of this flavor on top of one another, all in this one pot, and it just comes together. And it just, it, it's just so amazing. And you're gonna see how all of this flavor infuses into the uh, ground protein that you use. And so now we're just gonna let this saute for, I don't know, any, anywhere between two and three minutes until the cabbage is wilted and the uh, carrots have softened. Next up, we're gonna add our ground protein straight into the pan. The reason why I say ground protein instead of calling out, you know, ground chicken like I'm using here, 
You can really use any ground protein that you want in this recipe. It's super flexible like that. The two probably most popular choices are gonna be a ground a poultry, like a ground chicken, or it's gonna be ground pork. Pork is so good in this recipe, but I'm on a bit of a health kick, so I'm gonna be a little bit healthier here. If you plan on using ground chicken just like I am, what I would suggest is, is that you guys use dark meat ground chicken. The light meat tends to dry out really fast and it doesn't have as much flavor. Now what I'm gonna try to do is to uh, spread out as much of the protein as I can so as much of the surface area of the ground chicken is touching the pan. That's gonna help it cook nice and evenly and then after that happens, I'm gonna start to break it up with my um, spatula. And I love to take some of the cabbage and the veggies and just toss it right on top of the uh, ground chicken as it's cooking. That's really gonna help get as much of the flavor from the vegetables into the chicken as possible. All right, so now as the underside of the chicken is starting to cook through, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take these pieces, almost like a pancake, and flip it right over. And that really helps to cook the chicken as evenly as possible. Now that I've flipped the chicken over, I'm just gonna start taking my spatula and start giving it a mash. And this is like kind of a similar thing that you would do if you were making tacos and you were cooking taco meat. Just mash up the protein as small as you can possibly get it. And as you're mashing, you can also just kind of mix it around, just trying to get it as cooked as evenly as possible. All right guys, so this is exactly what the mixture should be looking like at this point in time. And now we're gonna be adding our sauces. So first we're gonna be adding two tablespoons of soy sauce. And next we're gonna be adding my personal favorite sauce. I love this sauce so much. It is sweet chili sauce. It's got a little sweetness and a little bit of heat too. It is so, so tasty. So we're gonna add a quarter of a cup of the sweet chili into the pan. And also if you haven't done it yet, make sure you turn down your heat at this point to nice and low. All we need to do now is to heat everything through together. We're done sauteing, we're done cooking. We just want it nice and warm. So give everything a nice mix. You wanna get the sauces and the protein and the veggies all well combined. And if you guys have any trouble finding sweet chili sauce in your grocery store, here's a workaround that you could do. While you're sauteing all the veggies, cut up a jalapeno or a Fresno pepper, anything that has the amount of heat that you like, add that in that's gonna give you the spice. And then at this point, when you've added in the soy sauce, you can also add in a quarter cup of honey and that's gonna give you the sweetness. All right, so now it is time to assemble these lettuce wraps and just spoon a little bit of the mixture with the veggies and the protein right into the lettuce cup. I'm using a romaine lettuce cup. You could use a butter lettuce cup if you want. Any lettuce cup that makes a nice bowl shape is gonna work for this recipe. After you've got the mixture in the lettuce, I like a couple different garnishes. You could put some uh, chopped cilantro on this. A squeeze of lime goes really well. My favorite though is some chopped peanuts. So I'm just gonna drop these right on top, just like this. And look how incredible this looks. I cannot wait to give it a try. But before I do, if you love this recipe and you wanna see more just like it, check out my Healthy Recipes playlist. Okay, let's see how we did. Mm. These Thai-inspired chicken lettuce wraps are so incredibly delicious. And they're so easy to make. It doesn't take that much time at all. It's a one-pan recipe. I know you guys can do it. I hope you give it a try. I'll see you in the next video.